Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. I'm grateful to have you here. I want to first start off by saying thank you so much for all of your sweet comments on my last Arise about planting the seeds. I heard from so many of you who somehow the message spoke to you, and that's all I want to do is speak to one of you if that's all that I can do. And so I'm grateful. I'm glad that, that so many of you got something from that message because it meant a lot to me to share that message as well. So welcome and let's get started. guys, I will start us off with a little prayer and then we'll get into our topic. <laughs> Luna back there. Okay, let's get started. Heavenly Father, I just come to you today just with so much praise and so much worship, God. I'm grateful for everybody watching. Lord, just fill us with your spirit, fill us with your love and your grace, God, and just let everyone know who's watching that they can do all things through you that makes them stronger, God, that your power is made perfect in our weakness and that you are the God who sees. You are the God who hears. You hear every prayer. You see every tear. Lord, we just give you all the glory, and we're so grateful for your love, God. Help us to get something from this message today, God. Please have your word come through me and touch somebody so that they will want to seek you. It's in your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. All right, friends. Sorry, um, there's going to be still construction. They're, they're working on the house, as usual. Um, I have been thinking so much about spiritual warfare this week, and I had, I had a rough day yesterday, I believe it was, and I just was thinking a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of thoughts, um, accusatory thoughts toward myself about Riv and about things that we didn't do or, you know, thinking I didn't pray hard enough or thinking that we made a mistake in a certain decision or, you know, just all these attacks on my mind and, and Granger just had to remind me, you're being spiritually attacked. You know, you are in a position where you are praising God, you are singing his praises, you, you know, you know the peace that he gave you in your heart. And I do, I know the peace that I had in my heart in the hospital. I know that God was guiding my decisions. I know that he was with me, he is with me, he's always with me. And I know that the enemy just likes to steal, kill, and destroy, just like John 10, 10 says. And so he comes in when we're a little vulnerable and feeling a little weak, he knows, he knows how to get in there. And so I was just feeling the, those, that, that just Satan attack. And Granger just reminded me, you know, that it was a spiritual attack and, and it's biblical. And I don't think we talk about it enough in saying that we are at a spiritual war every day of our lives, every day of our lives, from the most mundane details to the biggest ordeals that we can go through. It's a spiritual war. I had to remind myself when I get to that place, like, no, you know God is good. You know you had the peace in your heart. You know that if River was meant to be here, he would be here. God would have kept him here. And you know that you don't have that much power. You know, we all like to think like we have so much power. If we could have changed this, if we could have changed that, we don't have that much power. You know, our, our Lord is sovereign. And if you believe like I do, you believe that he has a hand in everything and he is weaving, he is weaving this tapestry. And I posted it on my Instagram, the weaver, the poem that I read a couple of rises ago that he sees the upper and we only see the underside with all of the, the ugly threads, you know, and, and he sees the beautiful, the beautiful masterpiece that he is creating. So we have to remind ourselves whenever the enemy comes in to refocus our thoughts. And so I want to talk about spiritual warfare today because I don't feel like we talk about it enough. And I talked about putting on the armor of God a few episodes ago. It may have been one of my first arises. And it's so important. And I feel like I need to re-say those same things because we have to do this every single day. It is something that we have to actively do every day is put on the armor of God. For someone far into their faith journey, a seasoned, a quote, seasoned Christian, we still get attacked. We still get attacked by Satan. And sometimes I feel like the more that you are worshiping God, the more that you are praising God, the more that you are stepping out in faith, the enemy attacks even more. So we just have to be prepared for that. In John 10, 10, it says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think he is doing just that every day. And just with everything that's been going on in the past few weeks, I've tried to stay off of news sites and, and for the most part, 
Facebook and things like that. I don't go in and read people's comments on other people's pages anyway, because the enemy is doing what he wants to do. I mean, whenever I do read them, I'm seeing, I'm seeing people fighting, you know, families fighting, uh, people defriending each other, you know, for their opinions. And that is what Satan wants. His main goal is to put us against each other and keep us away from God. That is his main goal. And I'm just seeing that it's working, you guys. He's causing families to fall apart. He's causing friendship, friendship circles to fall apart. And that is what he wants. And we have to so stand firm and not let that happen to us. Proverbs 29, 11 says, a fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. I know there's so many times, guys, when we wanna say our opinion and we wanna tell people how it is and we wanna say what our rights are and all that, but a wise man quietly holds it back. It, it is so much better to pause, think about things before we say them because it's just, it's just not worth an attack on one of your friends or one of your family that you, you probably love that person. These little things about politics or religion or, or everything else that's happening in the world, it's just not worth losing a friendship over or losing a family member over. It's just not worth it. He wants us yelling and screaming at each other because he just sits back and smiles. He just sits back and smiles and he, his job is done. He has done what he has come here to do. Another thing is we can't allow the enemy to take up residence in our mind. The mind is so, so powerful, you guys, and it is like the window to the soul. And if we allow his accusations and his shame and his guilt and his making you feel guilty and telling you all of these things, you're fat, you're ugly, no one's gonna love you, you're a terrible mother, you're never gonna get through this, you're never gonna stop, you're never gonna be able to stop, you deserved what happened to you, or you'll never be able to quit. These are all lies. These are all lies from the enemy, and they are meant to get into your head so that you can feel down and out about yourself. You can turn to it, you can turn to sin, and you can turn away from God. Sorry. We have no defense against the enemy unless we have Jesus in our heart. That is our main defense. We can't have him fight for us if we don't even have him in our heart, if we don't if we don't seek him daily, if we haven't accepted him into our hearts. How can we have him fight for us? And we are not strong enough to fight against the devil ourselves. We need the power of Jesus and the power of God, and we need God in our corner. It says in Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 1 Peter 5, 8, also says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a lion seeking someone to devour. So he just prowls around seeking to steal, kill, and destroy. Seeking that vulnerable mom, seeking that vulnerable little girl or little boy, seeking that friend who feels like another friend hurt them. So he gets into their mind and makes them think, well, she never liked you. She did this on purpose. And it, he just makes us think all these thoughts that are just not true probably about another person and it makes us just, just go deeper and deeper and deeper into states of depression and anxiety and fear how can we fight these attacks first off the main thing is accepting jesus is accepting our lord and savior into your heart because without him we don't stand a chance we just don't repent turn away from sin turn away from those negative things that you're doing and run back to god i don't know if you are far away from god i don't know if you are brand new to this faith journey but just hit your knees and turn to him because he is there and he is waiting for you and he is, he is trying to reveal himself to you and he wants you guys there and he will fight for you. All you have to do is be still. Pray, 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 pray. This is what I do when I'm feeling attacked. Just like yesterday, I immediately stopped. I immediately prayed after I cried and I just, I just prayed for God's wisdom and God's truth and for him to fill me and fight for me. And I just, you know, you, it's, it's a matter of surrender. You just surrender and say, Lord, I can't do this. I need these thoughts gone from my head. I need your help. I know what your word says and your word is truth. And open my eyes, help me to fight against the schemes of the devil and help me to fight against the spiritual warfare that's going on in my home or my family or my school or my work. We just have to pray. We have to pray for other people too. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So just pray for the Lord to reveal truth about a certain situation. Read and know. We can read and know. We just have to open up our Bibles. Open up our Bible, guys. We can't fight against the enemy if we don't know truth. And it's scary because Satan knows scripture and he will disguise himself as an angel of light and say certain things to make you kind of think, oh, maybe, you know, maybe that is right. Maybe, maybe God doesn't care about me. Maybe God doesn't love me. Look what he did for that person that he didn't do for me. 
And so we have to know. So read, 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 read your Bible. Start in the book of John, read the gospels, then go into the epistles and just start there. And I promise it will start to be illuminated for you. Pray to have eyes to see the truth and pray for God to, to help you understand the words that you're reading. Jesus always battled Satan with the word. He always said, it is written, it is written. So in order for us to fight, we have to know the word. We have to know what God's truth says and know that it is written. Worship always. Nothing I think ticks Satan more, ticks Satan off more than worshiping, even when it hurts to worship, even when you are going through one of the worst circumstances of your life to turn on some worship music and praise, 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 even in your sadness, even in your trials and tribulations, because it just shows that no matter what, Satan cannot get to you that you trust your God and you believe that he will turn it all for good and that what the enemy meant for evil, he will turn it into good. So just worship, worship when it's hard. That's one of the main times I worship. You know, I worship when things are easy. I, I'm grateful, I praise. But when I'm having a hard day is when I, I crank up my worship music, I sing loudly, I rebuke Satan. I say, get out of my thoughts, get out of my head. I know the truth and I praise God. <laughs> Dogs are playing with toys. Lastly, Call a friend, call a family member, rely on each other, tell, tell people, this is really hard for me, really, really hard. I don't like to ask anybody for help. I don't really like to ask anybody for prayer. If I do, it's very rare. And, and if I actually ask you for prayer, it means I really need it, that I'm really, really low. So don't let yourself get to that point. Ask for prayer, ask for help. In Matthew 18, 20, it says, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Ask for help, ask for prayer. So I wanna give you guys the first step in battling against the enemy. And like I said, I don't feel like we talk about it enough. We talk about Jesus, we talk about God. I don't feel like we talk about enough of spiritual warfare. And so I wanna invite you guys to say the prayer with me again. I know so many of you have said it, but I wanna invite you if you're new to this Arise. Right now, this is where I invite you. If you, if you are feeling lost, if you are feeling down, if you are feeling like, I just can't do this anymore, I can't do it anymore, I need help, surrender. I'm inviting you to surrender to our Savior who died for you and who loves you and who will fight for you. So if you will, just say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner, God. I need help. Please forgive me of my sins, God. I want to turn away and I want to follow you. I believe that you are the son of God and I believe that you died for me so that I can have life. I need your help in these attacks that I'm feeling. I need your help to fight against these things of this world, God, and I know only you can do that for me. Lord, I wanna follow you from this day forward I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I want to die to myself and live for you the rest of the days of my life, God. It's in your precious name I pray, amen. I hope some of you said that prayer. I just, it always just fills me with so much hope every time I say that prayer because it's like, once again, I'm surrendering to Jesus, and I just, it's one of the main things I've learned over these last few years is I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. And I doubt any of you can either. Actually, I know, I know you guys can't. I know that we all need Jesus in our lives, in our heart. And we have to focus not on this world, but on our heavenly, on our heavenly world where we belong. So I hope some of you guys said that prayer. I hope you guys can focus on the spirit. I hope you're, I hope you felt something when you said it, and I hope that. Moving forward, you can feel that spirit and you can live your life being led by the spirit and, and shut out those negative thoughts, those negative feelings, those, those accusations that you feel are just being thrown at you. We are in a battle, guys. We gotta put on our armor every day. And I just hope that we can all come together, pray for each other, comment below if you need anything for us to pray for you about. That's what we're here for. I'm grateful for our little small group. I thank you for watching and just know that you are so chosen. God loves you so much and Jesus wants you to be a part, be a part of the kingdom and accept him into your heart. Have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye.